Our scripture reading for today comes from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. Hear the word of the Lord. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this, one of you says, I follow Paul, another, I follow Apollos, another, I follow Cephas, still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except for Crispus and Gaius, so no one can say that you were baptized in my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. May God add blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Scripture. When I sat down to begin writing this reflection, I couldn't help but feel my heart break a little. Some 2,000 years later, and the words that Paul spoke to the churches in Corinth still ring true today. It's sad. Like, it's actually really depressing if you think about it. Paul is writing to the Corinthian Christians, telling them that their disunity that they are experiencing is creating a poor representation of the body of Christ. I mean, How can Christians preach a life of unity when they can't even agree with their own worshiping bodies? I follow Paul. I follow Apollos. I follow Cephas. I follow Christ. Fast forward to now, we say, I follow Paul. I follow X radio host. I follow Y preacher. I follow Z author. I follow Christ. The sad part is, In today's case, at least, I cannot speak for Corinth. The I follow Christ people are saying that in the most judgmental and belittling and hateful way that it could be said. That is taking the Lord's name in vain. We've all heard it. Some of us here may have even said it ourselves. You disagree with someone over some passage of scripture and then say, well, I am a real Christian because I follow Jesus and read my Bible 30 times a day. And then just leave it at that, completely discrediting the faith of the person that you were just talking to. Unfortunately, today we are seeing disunity all over our churches. Did you know that there is an estimated 45,000 denominations in the world today? Not churches, denominations. Do you know why new denominations form? People arguing over things and one side thinking they know better than the other and then a split happening. Nationally, we just watch our Episcopal and Anglican siblings fight, spending millions of dollars in lawsuits and end with a split and some people losing their houses of worship. Now we are watching the same thing happen with our Methodist siblings. All because one side thought they knew better than the other. One side thought they could limit God's grace. I follow the red church. I follow the blue church. Squabbles are happening in our churches over what side that congregation is going to be on. Both sides claiming to have Christ on theirs. So long ago are the hopes of purple churches existing. Our churches mimic our culture, and unfortunately, our culture has become so divided that I do not know if a purple church could even work anymore. Paul gives us wisdom in his letters to the Corinthians. Is Christ divided? No. But the church being divided is ripping Christ apart. We have become the place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Each of us is fighting for a crumb of Christ that we can have control over. But guess what? Christ cannot be in our control. 
we should be under Christ's control. When Christ died and was resurrected, there were no limits or stipulations put on our salvation. The grace of God washed over all of creation and all of creation was reconciled to God. Yet here we are, stifling out God's grace and restricting access to God's love unless they come to my side. We are letting our politics influence our faith and not the other way around. We are giving in to whoever may be the louder voice, no matter what damage and destruction that leaves behind, no matter who gets hurt. Our churches are arguing and fighting and warring over every little thing, and we are expecting people to be attracted to this. Hey, you should come join my church. Yeah, we may argue a lot. None of us actually like each other, and we spend more time and money proving I'm right than we do pouring into our own communities. But hey, the donuts are good and the coffee is fresh. Are you serious? You think a youth is going to be interested in church beyond high school when at their first board meeting they get yelled at and silenced? You think the kids struggling with their sexuality and identity is going to feel like a sanctuary is a safe space for them when the loudest voices would rather them alone, dead, than loved? You think the single mother who is just trying to find community is going to feel included in a place where people are whispering behind her back? No. Quite frankly, I don't blame them for not trusting the church. There are times I don't trust the church. We too often get in the way of the work that Christ is doing in people's lives. As opposed to being beacons of God's love and hope, we have become vessels for Satan's hate and suffering. We've spent so much try time trying to call others to repentance that we have neglected our own practices of repentance. We've forgotten to address the logs in our own eyes. We've forgotten who Jesus died for. He didn't die for me. He didn't die for you. He died because of us. A universal us. An all-encompassing us. And then he was resurrected for us. A universal us. An all-encompassing us. We are all invited to be a part of what God has planned for this world. We are all invited to be a part of making this place reflect the heart of God. But we have to give up the fighting. We need to stop looking at who we are allowed to love and realize that the real question is, who do I need to love today, right now, this moment? God, our hate has blinded us and we need a reminder of who we are supposed to love in this very moment. Let your all-encompassing all become our all-encompassing all. A house divided cannot stand. The church's walls are crumbling around us. And maybe that's not the worst thing. Maybe that is the kick in the pants we need to reevaluate what it is we are supposed to be doing as Christians. I hope it doesn't come to that. But we have seen in Scripture that God is willing to do what God needs to do in order to get our attention. Whether it be a flood, a plague, a whale, or letting us kill the Christ. The one who taught unity to realize how far we've strayed. Maybe we have put our churches over our faith. Maybe we have put our pride over our love. Maybe we have put ourselves over our neighbor. Worse, maybe we have put ourselves over our God. I don't know. But the bread that we break is mimicking the broken heart of Christ right now. May we, the partakers, work together to reunite the body of Christ. Amen.